Analysts at the Institute for the Study of War, ISW, point to an increase in executions of Ukrainian prisoners of war, which are condoned and encouraged by Russian commanders. Russian forces recently executed nine Ukrainian prisoners of war in Kursk Oblast amidst a wider escalation of such executions by Russian forces across the theater. The Ukrainian analytical project Deep State Map reported on the 13th of October that Russian forces executed these nine Ukrainian prisoners of war near the village of Zeleny Shilyak, Kursk Oblast, on October the 10th. Ukrainian drone operators unexpectedly encountered Russian forces in what they likely believed to be a rear area coming under enemy fire. Facing limited ammunition, the drone operators were forced to surrender, after which Russian forces took them as prisoners of war. Evidence from the aftermath of the execution suggests that Russian forces disarmed, lined up, stripped and shot the Ukrainian prisoners of war, indicating a premeditated execution. On October the 13th, Ukrainian human rights ombudsman Dmitro Lubinets condemned the executions as a serious violation of the Geneva Convention on the Treatment of POWs. Lubinets also announced that he had sent letters regarding the case to the United Nations and the International Committee of the Red Cross. The Ukrainian prosecutor's office similarly announced that it had launched an investigation into the execution reports on the same day. The ISW has recently observed an increase in Russian forces executing Ukrainian prisoners of war throughout the theater, and Russian commanders are likely writ large, condoning, encouraging or directly ordering the execution of Ukrainian prisoners of war. The ISW continues to track footage and reports of Russian service members executing Ukrainian prisoners of war and has observed a wider trend of Russian abuses against Ukrainian prisoners of war across various sectors of the front that appear to be enabled, if not explicitly endorsed, by individual Russian commanders. ISW said, Russian military bloggers have largely praised the execution of the Ukrainian prisoners of war, reaffirming the norm of justifying and celebrating war crimes in the wider Russian ultra-nationalist community. Many Russian mill bloggers not only justified but celebrated the Russian execution of the prisoners of war in Kursk Oblast by claiming that the executions were deserved or that such executions are a common aspect of war. ISW added, they have frequently glorified Russian atrocities and brutality in Ukraine since the start of the full-scale invasion, a trend that likely fosters the systemic execution of Ukrainian prisoners of war. China held large-scale military exercises surrounding Taiwan and its outlying islands Monday in what it called a warning against Taiwan independence. China's defense ministry said the drills were a response to Taiwanese President Lai ching tees refusal to concede to Beijing's demands that Taiwan acknowledge itself as a part of the People's Republic of China under the rule of the Communist Party. Taiwan's defense ministry called the drills a provocation and said its forces were prepared to respond. Joseph Wu, Secretary General of the National Security Council of Taiwan, said China's drills have violated the basic spirit of the United Nations Charter to resolve disputes through peaceful means. Wu said President Lai ching tee has held a national security meeting to give clear instructions on the threat of China's military. And he believed that Taiwan's armed forces will appropriately deal with the threat from China. China's Eastern Theater Command spokesperson Navy Senior Captain Li Shi said the Navy, Army Air Force and Missile Corps were all mobilized for the drills. This is a major warning to those who back Taiwan independence and a signifier of our determination to safeguard our national sovereignty, Li said in a statement on the service's public media channel. Taiwan was a Japanese colony before being unified with China at the end of World War II. It split away in 1949 when Chiang Kai-shek's nationalists fled to the island as Mao Zedong's communists swept to power on the mainland. Lai took office in May, continuing the eight-year rule of the Democratic Progressive Party that rejects China's demand that it recognize Taiwan as a part of China. China routinely states that Taiwan independence is a dead end and that annexation by Beijing is a historical inevitability.